Welcome to Conversations With. My name is Shaylee Hugendorn and I live with Bipolar 2 Disorder. Sharing with others is healing both individually and collectively. Sharing our stories will educate others, bring more understanding, shed more light and smash more stigma. Our voices need to be heard. Our stories aren't over yet. This is Bipolar. Hi everyone, welcome back to This is Bipolar. I am your host, Shaylee Huguenorn. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a speaker. I am obviously a podcaster, um, an event planner, and a mom and a wife. I live with Bipolar 2 Disorder. And I'm really excited to be here. My guest is awesome. I just wanted to, before we start, remind everybody, I have subscriptions on Instagram. And what that looks like is you sign up to be a subscriber, $6.99 a month, and you get extra content. And one of the best things that you get is an extra exclusive going deeper episode from every podcast that's only available to you. So if you don't know how to sign up, just go to my page. And then it should say subscriptions. You click on it and it'll do the rest for you. If you are unsure, I know a lot of people are unsure how to do it. Just message me and I can walk you through it. It would be amazing. And somebody was telling me the other day they didn't know, but I also do a lot of event speaking. So if you're looking for an event speaker, I'm your girl. So message me and um, we can work together. I'm so excited to get started because I have just been getting closer with my new friend, Missy, and we have just connected and I just feel like such a heart connection to her. So I'm really excited to share her story. Also, as y'all know, my favorite type of interview is when I don't know the whole story. So you're finding out when I'm finding out. So it's going to be um, an amazing episode and an amazing conversation. So Missy, I'm so excited you're here. I would love, love, love if you could tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Missy. Um, I My pronouns are also she, her, and I live with Bipolar One. And I uh, started a business called Comfortable Silence that is all about bringing awareness and ending the stigma surrounding bipolar disorder yeah so. and for the people watching the video i am wearing the shirt and a bracelet and i love it it just makes me feel <laughs> it makes me feel i um, love it my mom made that bracelet <laughs> i know yay mom thank you yeah for those of you that are listening it has the happy face the up and down and also you can go to the website and check it out i will have all of Missy's information and about comfortable silence in the show notes. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I'm really, really excited uh, about that. That was the first thing that caught my eye, her um, detail and just the original, uh, um, you know, images and such on the shirts and on like, you're just so creative. And that caught my attention first. And then I was like, we need to be friends. And yeah. now we're friends. Yay. I'm so, I was like, wow i'm so honored i almost was like i'm so lucky but then i was like of course she would want like i believe in myself you know and it's just like a confirmation and validation that um i am on the right path and i get like so emotional talking about it because you know my goal is to inspire other people and let them know that they're capable of anything so and i love that and i love that and you're doing exactly that my friends go and follow her immediately. Can you tell us your handle? I think it's like, I don't want to mess up the underscores. So tell us your yeah, handle. Yeah, it's um underscore underscore because everything is taken. Yep. <laughs> so underscore underscore comfortable dot silence. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And go if you don't get it, go check out the show notes. We'll put it there. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to just go back, Missy. I love hearing about you know, people's childhood and into their, um, you know, teenagehood. I'm curious um, if you, you know, if you felt different or when you started noticing, mm -hmm. um, and I know you have a big teenage story. So I mm -hmm. would just love to start with, you know, did you feel different? What were you like as a child? And then yeah. 
Um, for those of you that are listening, as always, we talk about really hard things on this podcast, and some of these things can activate people. If you are activated or if you are triggered by anything, please take care of yourself. First, first, if you have to walk away or not at all, that is completely understandable. We would never, ever want to trigger anybody. Just wanted to add that before we dive into your story. That's so kind of you. Just, yeah. Yeah. And so I would just, yeah, I would just love to hear what did, did you start noticing anything as a child and lead us into um, your teenagehood? All right, we're gonna have to kumbaya off. I told the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. Uh, I didn't really know what normal was growing up. Um, I do remember my parents' uh, nickname for me was Pissy Missy. So <laughs> there's nice. that. Um, yeah, I. So I did always have like a little bit of a temper. Mm -hmm. um and I would get kind of I don't know just agitated very easily um however uh I was diagnosed when I was 15 which is very young for my yeah. parents um and I have read that it tends to um it tends to be diagnosed like after somebody goes through a pretty like life-altering experience or um, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it was very mm -hmm. true for me. Yeah, um, yeah. It's that there we all have, you know, we have a precursor, a predisposition. It's not like um, borderline where it's caused by trauma, but mm -hmm. different things can bring it out and they can be good as well, right? Right. right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but I can see that you're like, I just wanted to confirm that you are correct and also say like it isn't stemmed from trauma. But absolutely, trauma can bring it to the forefront. So, mm. yeah. So, uh, I try not to say um so much. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, don't even worry about it. Been podcasting. It's like when you're watching years. a movie and people are like, 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 and it drives yeah. you crazy. And then you watch yeah. a video of yourself and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> um, so, uh, when I was 15, I. Um, my high school uh, was hit by an F4 tornado um, while we were in school. And at times I feel telling this story almost sounds like uh, like I'm blaming it, you know, um, but I feel like it is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was in the school when it happened. We all were. And um, you know, it, it destroyed the entire school. I remember just looking up and seeing the roof lifting up above my head. And um, yeah, I, uh, I like had an asthma attack and passed out and I woke up and it was like the movie Twister and uh, eight kids died in that. And I, I saw a lot of things that you would never want to see. Um, so after that, um, I'm so I definitely, sorry that happened to you. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's um, it was huge. It was on CNN. George Bush actually flew down that same day and did a walkthrough. Um, Weather Channel did a documentary on it. Wow. So it was, it was, it was a lot. It was very traumatizing. Still to this day, I get horrible nightmares and. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I did learn that I live with survivor's guilt too. So I've been working on that. Yeah. Um, but of course, like after that, my mom told me, I was, she was like, I think you should go to therapy. Rightfully so. And uh, I ended up getting, you know, referred to a psychiatrist and or psychologist. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got diagnosed. And then I started seeing a psychiatrist. But, you know, they were just like, you have bipolar disorder. And I was like, okay, like, well, what does that mean? It was never really explained to me. Um, I, all I know is I was a guinea pig and I ate, I tried so many different medications and um, I was angry all the time. Like yeah. angry. I was such, um, I was such an angry kid. And I feel bad when I look back on it, how I, you know, treated even my parents, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I didn't, yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah. So I think about my teenage years with my parents as well. And I'm like, try to be 
try to be gentle with myself because mm -hmm. it's so hard to explain that it is a symptom, right? Because it's, it's not, not you. Which is yeah, hard. it's not you. And yet we have to be responsible for it, right? Whereas there would be so much more empathy and um, understanding if we were broke our arm or we're bleeding or, mm -hmm. you know, we're having a side effect from yeah. something and yeah. it's so entwined and and stigmatized, right? Sometimes I say, and it's probably not a great thing to say, but sometimes I wish that people could, like, I had something physical on the outside to see, to, sh you know, to sh mm -hmm. prove my, prove my pain, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's difficult to look back and, and not, not feel guilty. And yet also try to be kind to ourselves that like, we were right. the best we can. Mm -hmm. I am I so curious about this doctor um, visit. So you went in to talk about the traumatic event mm -hmm. and then they figured out that you had bipolar yeah. one so, disorder. To be honest with you, I don't remember a lot of my mm. teenage years after that. I remember bits and pieces. Um, yeah. So I just had so much going on in my head. I just... Um, I guess like blackouts, I guess, you know, um, yeah. trauma uh, tends to, you tend to, you know, subconsciously uh, block out, you know, areas of your life. And then later in life, you're so lucky and you remember them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, but I was diagnosed, I think, yeah, 15, 16. And um, I was a a b word to everyone <laughs> and right. i did did use it as an excuse um mm -hmm. it was like well i have bipolar so yeah and that is not something i do anymore yeah but i did actually going back to you know treating parents or loved ones differently i listened to an episode from inside bipolar yeah podcast and there was an episode on um you know growing up like the parent side of, you know, side of uh, the story and, you know, just to be easy on yourself. And um, that helped a lot, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's amazing. And also too, like, it's so intertwined. It actually is brain development for teenagers to actually be like grouchy and be do you know what I mean I yes, try to remind myself you really get it yeah yeah as a mom I try to remind myself that oh that means they're growing but then you have this double whammy of triple for you like the mm -hmm. trauma of an actual event and be living with a serious serious yeah. illness right I yeah. I would be surprised if you were not very emotional during that time and I'm right yeah that's really was, uh and it's strange to you how people can go through the same experience, but it does not affect them long time as it does. You know, my sister was in the tornado, my cousin, and um, of course she's still very, you know, bothered by it, but she just, well, she told me, you know, I've made peace with it and I hate having to recognize it every year and talk about it. And I know you know, I've made peace with it and I can move on. So, um, but me, I just get, I still get like recurring nightmares and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have like little, um, triggers. Like if heat lightning happens, I, I can't, I just, it brings yeah. me back. Like wow. God forbid I'm driving. <laughs> right. So, wow. um, but I have tried to teach myself um how to start like coping with rain uh i started listening to like thunderstorms like while you're sleeping and rain and just mm. trying to get comforted by that so yeah. But, yeah i can imagine that there's a lot of hyper vigilance around weather and can you remind me where you live i live in st pete uh florida now florida okay okay yeah yeah, in the uh, very hot humidity where mm. everybody keeps moving and the rent is so high now. <laughs> oh, really? My hair, I, I feel like my hair would not do well in Florida. Oh, I had um, <laughs> I had super curly long hair when I moved here. No way. Or, 
well, I had really long hair and then I moved here and I found out that I have really curly hair. Um, <laughs> and I was like, well, there's, I guess so. Um, yeah. And then I just started cutting it all off. <laughs> I love it. I think I love your hair. I love the hair. Yeah. Um, so you found out and you're a teenager and you're, it makes you even angrier and you're trying all these meds. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can, I was very angry afterwards as well. Did you accept it right away? Because you were a teenager, were you like, oh, well, okay, well, and you were so young. Yep. This is what, yeah, it is. Or I, yeah, I did. I don't really know if I accept is the word. I was just like, okay, well, cause it wasn't explained to me. I didn't even know right. if I was bipolar one or two. I was just bipolar. Yeah. And Eric had bipolar. Um, yeah. I've learned to talk better to myself about that. So I didn't really even fully understand mm -hmm. about the disorder or the symptoms of it. I didn't know what mania was. I didn't know what yeah. um, depression was. I didn't realize that a lot of my life choices were triggering and making it worse yeah. <laughs> uh, until, you know, I had a huge uh, manic episode. I was seven or eight months and I didn't wow. even know. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of when I decided I had to call my parents and tell them I couldn't take care of myself, um, which was really hard, but I was having psychosis, which I didn't know was a thing. Uh, I just thought I was like, well, there's, there's that. <laughs> that's Maybe. wild. How uh, do you experience that? Can you explain to people that? don't experience psychosis, what that felt like for you? Right. So it started with, and that's still like when I uh, can, what I'm about to tell you, when I can have that happening, I'm like, oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll try to make a joke about it and be like, mm, that's not there, Missy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it started off with just um, my, like I would feel what I thought was my cat, like rubbing up against my legs. And, uh, and I would look and he wasn't there. And then I would see him a lot out of my peripheral or I'd hear him, you know, uh, like meowing and it was never, it was never him. And then it started getting into, um, I would hear people, I had a couple friends who have bipolar and I would hear them say, you know, they wake up and, uh, they feel like people touching them or they feel like people are trying to get them. Oh. And like maybe f five months in, I remember like feeling somebody grab my shoulder like very hard and I woke up and I was like, whoa, you know, I was like, mm. I am not losing it. Um, I was just like, I, something isn't right. Yeah. Um, yes. And I would start, um, I just felt like I was very, uh, reckless and I would start, um, let's see, I would, I started having like ticks and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to like, I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror anymore. I would just see my skin got so bad. I like developed like a skin picking habit. Yeah. I was very much so I've suffered with, you know, um, body dysmorphia and what comes along with that. So I was always very much so obsessed and I just wanted to feel pretty all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was hard for me to. Yeah. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. I, I feel like, um, a lot of people don't, don't really understand it right because words like psychotic or whatever are thrown around all the time mm -hmm. just for people with different behaviors right, right. like yeah uh, and money too the more that i've oh, learned yeah. about it how terrifying it it must be yeah i mean i have have never been good with money ever mm. ever um i would just I would make, and when it, before I got like, oh, I made a decent amount of money, but for some reason I could not mm. keep up. And during my manic episode, I actually racked up over $10,000 in credit card debt, which is not like me at all. And yeah. um, 
it was so when I got better and I moved back and I, um, you know, I was on my feet again, I couldn't really um, do anything for myself because I was so consumed by debt. Um, yeah. like I lost so much weight and I couldn't mm. buy clothes for myself. So it means I was sick again. Mm. And, uh, you know, so that was hard, but my parents, um, my dad grew up very, very poor mm. and he is very humble. He's very successful. He taught me the value of a dollar and I've never once, uh, felt comfortable asking my family for money. So when it happened, when I moved back and I had all this debt, he called me one day and he was like, I know this is like holding me back. And it was the one thing that like reminded me that I was sick. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to pay off your debt for you and give you a fresh start. Oh, yeah. And I don't, uh, I don't get like emotional because I'm like sad about it. I'm just so grateful, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love him. I love him. He's yeah. My dad is my hero. Um, I mean, if it weren't for my parents, I don't know. You know, I don't know where I would be. So, because they took me in, and at first I felt like an animal in a cage at a zoo, because it was. I felt like literally everything. I mean, and rightfully so. They were they're concerned about me because I literally yeah. I was like shaking I remember I was so out of it I was like shaking my head back and forth and I did this a lot like I couldn't um I couldn't like focus my eyes were so dry that's how I get when I'm manic and uh I just I did constantly hear things that weren't there yeah. and uh I just got pissed off all the time because I was like Oh my God, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I, I left everything I knew behind. Um, yeah. But it was the best decision I could have ever made for myself. Yeah. yeah. Was there. Um, you know, I tell everybody I shut the world out and I started focusing on my, my physical health and mental. Yeah. And just, I had to be, it was the best place to be because I was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I would, I would talk to like a few of my close friends, but I weeded out the very, uh, the very bad ones that I realized like were not my friends. Yeah. And, and yeah, I just, I remember probably three months later, uh, I would wake up and I'd be like, wow, I got such good sleep and mm. you know, I'm, I'm excited for the day. And yeah. I remember like sitting outside and just being like, you know, feeling like I was finally comfortable in silence because I could never just sit and be like, just be, you know? Yeah. Oh, I 100% percent yeah. Because it was that. all this noise is what I yeah. call it. I call it, you know, don't let the noise, you know, get to you. Yeah. Because that's what it was. It was, it was just, you know, the, the angry thoughts and the person inside you telling you that you'll never make it. And that's yeah. when you have to realize, like, I'm going to show you I can yeah. make it. Yeah. So. I think you bring up a really like hard, but beautiful point for, to comfort people, but also to educate people that don't live with bipolar disorder is that when it's a full body experience, right? We think, Oh, oh it's, you know, it's all, it's mental illness. It's all in your um, it's full. I can yeah. hear, I don't know how to describe, but I have like a journal entry of, uh, I can hear, I, I was just talking about how I can literally feel my ear hairs growing. Right? It's I so can feel sensitive. Everything. Yeah. I call it my spidey senses. Everything is loud. The world is coming at me. I'm like hot and Very I'm cold loud. and I'm, yes. And I uh -huh. feel like, I think a lot of anger stems from that because like I can barely cope with like my like regulating my body and then I'm supposed yeah. to hold, hold conversations or I'm supposed to like be yeah. in, uh, be present in my marriage or raise mm -hmm. like it's just it's over it's completely overwhelming yeah and it's wow. to me that's mostly when I'm hypomanic I have bipolar two I live mm -hmm. with two disorder and um I when I'm depressed I barely feel anything 
Yeah, I call that like when people ask me how I'm doing, I don't really know how to describe it other than emotionless. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It isn't always fine. like crying all the time, although I do that too. But it's like this weird numbness, and I just go through the motions of life, right? Mm -hmm. And that was um, pre pre medication. Uh, the medication really helped with the depression. But mm -hmm. I'm curious when you started going through your manic episode. You said like before you were guinea pig trying medication. Were you on medication? Were you on the wrong mm -hmm. medication? So or I was actually on. I'm sorry. I feel like I keep interrupting you. Oh, that's don't you think that's on brand us? I feel uh, like, yeah. I feel like that's my podcast. Uh -huh. I interrupt everybody and that that's just how it rolls. Yeah, ADHD it. also. <laughs> so I uh what was the question? So <laughs> the the question was, were you on medication? Like were you on medication or where were you at in that when mm -hmm. the mania came on? I'm so curious. Mm -hmm. So I was on um, Depakote for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, like them telling me that there was nothing else to help. It was either that mm -hmm. or um, lithium maybe. And I was still having, it didn't, I didn't feel any different. I was, yeah. you know, um, I was still having, which obviously you still have episodes when you're medicated, but it was like nonstop. It didn't help at all. And right. uh, I actually left my uh, partner that I'd been with for five years. We just, it was a toxic relationship. We loved each other very much, but it was just not good for my mental health. Um, so I remember calling my sister one day at like five in the morning and just being like, she was like, how much money do you have in your savings? And I said, this emergency, she said, what are they for? And I said, emergencies. And she said, you don't think your happiness is an emergency? Whoa. And, yeah. And uh, I, the next day I went and drove around and a week later I signed a lease for my own place and it was so beautiful i loved it so much it had like it was called an attic apartment so all the walls were like this oh. and it was just such it was me and i had 200 dollars to my name after that and mm -hmm. i had a lamp and a bed and i was like i'm the happiest i've ever been you know what i mean yeah yeah and then, yeah and then i uh I started a new job and then I had heard from a lot of my friends that they take one McDoll and how it really like helped. Okay. And I've done a ton of research on Depakote and I knew it's not that good for you long-term. If anybody's taking it, I don't want it. Things Please work. don't stop. Yeah. You know, yeah, it works different for different. any, everybody. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's Missy's experience. Yes. Uh, so I actually, made the decision to transition to the McDonald, uh, which took me six months to like transition off of it. And I remember my doctor being like, of course, but do you really think that maybe right now is the right time? Like you just moved, you just started your job, you know, you're going through it. And I was like, you know, yeah, let's do it. And I remember, uh, you know, I was still friends with my partner because he was my best friend. Mm. And he would be like, I can, I can tell a difference for sure. Okay. And I could tell a difference in myself. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, that's a tough one to know when to try something new, but you were doing everything else new and the other one wasn't working. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Like what else do you do? Yeah. Um, yeah talking about so you've brought up a little bit about relationships and a little bit about work however much you're willing to to talk about I'm curious about how um living with bipolar disorder affected you at work before like what were you like before medication or the medication that worked and right. what, what did you notice after so uh i was diagnosed very early and yeah. that was the only thing that I took for 
for, I guess, 15 years. Wow. Uh, and so I don't know, because I was still pissed off all the time and I yeah. wasn't really, but I was also not aware. I didn't do my research and um, I was not aware of like a routine. I had no idea. Like I had, I literally had no idea about any of this. And I was like, this makes sense. Uh, I wasn't really sleeping. I was drinking all the time because I wasn't, I didn't want to be alone in my own thoughts, you know? Um, but then I would go out and I would just come home and be like, that was exhausting. Uh, and I didn't even want to do that, you know? So I, I don't know. I don't really know what it was like without medication. Right. Um, right. So, you know, I got on the McDonald's like, Oh, wow, this is helping. And I started working out a lot, which I, mm. I love. I feel like the gym like truly sh- saved my life. Yeah. Um, Cause I got a relationship, a healthy relationship with food and uh, you know, that helped me immensely. Um, and then in March, right after uh, my birthday and it was two weeks after the tornado anniversary, which is always hard for me. Yeah. I got a knock on my door from my landlord and he was like, I sold the place. You got to be out in 30 days. What? And I had, you Your know, your little there. place, your cute place. Yeah, it was like, it was so beautiful. It was me. And I had like my own wooden staircase that I like put plants all over. And um, it was just, it was, you know, and it was also a reminder, like you did this, you know? Yeah. So I spiraled, obviously. I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um, you know, throughout my careers, I have always had um, issues with, uh, just, I don't know. Um, I guess now looking back, I knew that it was like harder for me to take on tasks and, uh, or just like deal with a lot at once. I would constantly think that, oh, this is one thing I took everything personally, everything. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. And, um, I guess I perceived things differently and it did, it did get in the way of things, but I just thought I, you know, I don't know. So after, uh, you know, I was told I needed to move. I was like, where am I going to go? I can't live with anyone. (laughs) You know, I have to live by myself. I have two cats and, um, I was just devastated. So I started, you know, panicking, looking at places to live constantly. And, um, I had a friend that I've known for years. She actually used to be my next door neighbor and we kind of fell out of touch for um, a few years, but we reconnected at um, one of our friends celebration of life. Mm -hmm. And we were both like, had just left toxic relationships. We looked great. And, uh, and that happened. And we were like, she was like, yeah, I have an extra room. And I was like, he brought us together, you know, Mm. and it was terrible. (laughs) I mean, I had to just, like, I basically lived in just one room, you know, it didn't feel like me at all. I felt just not myself. And, uh, yeah, I just ended up just wanting to not be there ever. And, um, And I like ended up like flying to California and telling myself, I'm going to move here. I love it here. You know? Yeah. Um, Because I remember there was a time when I was there and I sat and there's like this place that my friend took me to and you like overlook all of San Diego. And I remember just sitting there and looking around and just crying, but because I felt like so proud of myself, you know, and I say thank you. Thank you to the universe and all Mm -hmm. that and came back I was still on a manic episode and uh you know I just I got home one day and all of my things were moved into the into the kitchen and uh yeah I mean all my paintings my I have this mirror from my great-grandmother that's been our family for like 100 years and you know I got the point I was like I I will move you know um but she 
uh, ended up telling me <clears throat> while I was backing up and stuff that she just had this blank stare in her eyes and she told me, you know, you should just go end your life. She said it, you know, bad, like, you know, the other way. Yeah. And I, I just looked at her and I was like, the next day was our friend's birthday that passed. And I said, how could you say that with, you know, you know, who's birthday and she said if he was here he would want you to do it too what? yeah and it was just it, terrible. Me, it was terrible I mean I remember and then all I saw was red I just snapped you know what I mean yeah and I like ran upstairs to call my therapist um and I would have left but I had my cats there I wasn't gonna leave my animals right so, um that ended badly. Uh, she ended up getting arrested for a battery. She she beat me up really bad. And I, yeah, and I had to call my parents the next day. And they were like, we are driving down there. They live in Alabama. Like, we're driving down there. We'll be there tomorrow. You are not allowed to go back there. We will literally pack up all of your things. And... Um, yeah, I had to stay in an Airbnb and I was just like, what is my life? You know, like, I can't believe this. And that's when I really started to spiral. So I was yeah, yeah. really depressed, but I was also, it was like manic to where I've never experienced before. I just, I literally, I couldn't see, I would constantly like do this because I, I just couldn't. I didn't know what was real or not. Um, I would leave like my phone. And one time I found my phone in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't eat. Um, I p started picking up my skin really bad. And I yeah. just, I just wanted to be alone. Like my mom kept, you know, sitting outside my, my door and like hearing me cry hysterically and being like, baby. And I would just be like, leave me alone. You know, like leave me here. <laughs> Uh, so, oh. but yeah, I, uh, I had to say goodbye to my life and it was hard, but it was, thought it was the best thing I could have ever done to myself. What are the practices or things that you did at that time to, mm -hmm. to help you? Like even the little things, people will probably right. be wondering how, how in that terrible, terrible place you were in, how did you crawl out of that? Really, I um, I established a routine which I never, I didn't do intentionally, but it helped. I worked out five times a week, um, which I had to be careful of because it it can get like obsessive for me just yeah. from my background. I ate very well. I uh, I didn't really have anything to do, so I just went to sleep. Yeah. I started listening to you know, podcast for sleeping and it would help me so much. I'd wake up and just feel great. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I wrote a lot and I didn't really focus on what I didn't have. I just focused on myself and, mm. you know, I believed in myself a lot. And I think <clears throat> I have this, uh, affirmation app. It's called I am. Mm. And I highly recommend it. It's, uh, I think a lot of it saved me from darkness. I call it darkness. Yeah. Because uh, you can set it to what you want to manifest. It's like overcoming anxiety or hard times or self-love and everything like that. And I had mindset to um, like self-love and getting through hard times. So I'd play those every day and, and just um, telling yourself, you know, uh, if you keep on feeding yourself, like, you know, affirmations, you're going to change your thought process. Yeah. And I remember, this is actually where one of my shirts came from is I remember driving around and just like crying so much. And I've never had like, you know, um, thoughts of not wanting to be here anymore. I'm so sorry if that's triggering. Um, but I just questioned a lot, like, what do I have to offer? Yeah. And I got a notification. It will send you push notifications throughout the day. And it said, my life has purpose. 
Wow. And then I just pulled over and I was like, oh my God, it like hit me like, like so hard. I cried, but I was just like, wow. You know, yeah. and I had two butterflies land on my windshield, which butterflies remind me a lot of like my grandmother. And I feel like they're sort of like a sign from the universe, like, hey, you're on the right path. Mm. And I would see them constantly after that. So wow. uh, that's why I made the, sh- the shirt. And that's why on my Help Us Here page, it says your life has purpose. Because- wow. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's so powerful what you talked about, because I know in the beginning when my therapist would be like, you know, tell yourself these kind things or do this. And I, you know, it, as our brain does lie to us. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, okay, but I don't believe it. Or what's the point? Or this is stupid. Yeah. And then she told me like, you can trick your brain. So I would say it and I'd be like, oh, you're awesome. Like I'd roll my <laughs> eyes. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. But guess what? Mm-hmm. The therapist was right because it does. Yeah. Work. And right I, now uh, I'm, yeah. I still have trouble being kind to myself. And, and so Mm -hmm. I did, it was like the Instagram trend a while ago um, where people like looked at pictures of themselves when they were younger, or I did it for you Mm -hmm. or whatever. And so I pulled out some pictures and I've been doing that lately and just seeing teenage Shaylee or Mm seven-year-old Shaylee or whatever. I have so much compassion for her. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's you right? Like yeah. that's still inside of yeah. you. Don't talk yeah. to, to her like that. And it's on my mirror and it's actually really yeah, on your mirror, yeah. 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 I am. Um, I'm, I think to go to further explain, I actually have um, sticky notes that I would put mm. all over where I would see it every day. And one of them before I decided to move, it said, whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. I would see it all the time. And that was like, I'm not changing. So I need to, you know, I need to move. And then um, I actually, my newest collection is called No Darkness, No Light. And that's from uh, an affirmation, which I feel like relates a lot to bipolar. And it says, I thank even the darkest of times for I must feel the difference to recognize the light. Mm. And that like, it helped me a lot because I mean, you really have to sometimes go through the worst, which you think is the worst, but really it's, uh, it's, it's to appreciate, you know, it just, there's a light ahead of this and yeah, that seriously helped me. So, I mean, I even have like a new little vision board that I started and I printed out all these things and right here it's, you know, I have this. (laughs) Yeah. So it says I pray if you're listening, it says I prioritize my mental health. Mm-hmm. Well, I think right now would be a great time to talk more about comfortable silence. You've told us mm-hmm. a little bit here and there, but tell us, tell us the comfortable silence story. I would love to hear it. Uh-huh. So I when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, I started um journaling a lot. And I w- I love your mug. <laughs> oh yeah I I got it made I want to make them I want to make them but I made my mugs uh, yeah I love Uh, it yeah I brand it with your therapist needs a new mug (laughs) that's amazing I love that yeah yeah. I just I just made this one but I'm waiting it's a whole other story but I'm waiting for my trademark to go through Mm because I don't want to put it out and I don't want someone you know what I mean what's going on yeah 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 Okay, back to your story. Enough about me. Uh, so I started journaling and I would, it was kind of like a way for me to like figure out what was going on in my head or just document it. And I would take like, um, I would go through at so many magazines and I would just like rip out pages and put them all together and uh, just write like simple things or like today and some of it I, and I, I still have all of them and I have like over 20 I think uh I have one of them on my you can see in one of my reels I'm like holding it up and so I've always kept them a secret and comfortable silence was my alias that I used in all my writings and so talk about depressed I thought of that when I was 16 <laughs> you know but so when I got sick and I moved home, I've always wanted to start my own brand. I was, 
you know, in scope of fashion. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. You know, I was like, I have to take my trauma and, you know, turn it into a brand. And this almost tells a story of, yeah. I like to go back and reference them because as hard as it is, sometimes you can kind of see your growth, you know? Yeah. Um, so we know a lot of my designs and everything that I write about are from my journals. So like the face of uh, Comfortable Silence on my website, and I have it pinned on my uh, Instagram, is a scan from my journal when I was 15. Yeah. So. Wow, this one? No, that is actually uh, my handwriting. Or my, my handwriting is the uh, little happy face, and I like yeah. to call that Manic Missy. <laughs> oh, so, I love it. Uh-huh, yeah. Wow. And people, people really... That's why I do enjoy doing markets. It's the, no matter if I don't make any money or not, it's how many people like walk up and they really resonate with it and they think it's amazing and they just, um, and that's awesome. I can't tell you how many people I meet that have bipolar or, you know, one yeah. of their family members is struggling. I always have at least one person that cries and hugs me and tells me, thank you so much. Wow. And that is, you know, I always say like, my main thing is helping people and making money is number two. Yeah. So one day they will balance out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you're listening, go, go. People are always asking me like, how do I, you know, how do I help end stigma or how do I, um, you know, what can I do? And one of the biggest things you can do is support us. Uh -huh. support us in the things that we are doing go and i would shout it from the rooftops go and buy missy's mm -hmm. thing like yeah i'm constantly coming out with new like i'm working on my new collection right now um which i've been in a pretty uh heavy i don't ever get depressed but i've been i'm finally coming out of it i think but i was not doing well so i just i didn't do anything i could not I can't do anything. So I'm rushing to get it done. But, uh, but yeah, so everything has a, a story behind it, just like no darkness, no light. Yeah. And uh, I'm it's me. It's just me. I am comfortable silence. Um, I'm figuring it out. I have yeah. no idea what I'm doing half the time. But uh, my friends say that's the fun of it, which <laughs> I don't yeah. know about that. <laughs> You're like, yes. You're like, yes. And also, no, mm -hmm. I think that regardless, I'm the same way, like my, my kind of mantra is, you know, but for one, one person, right. But if we're honest, like it, it is work and it mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, emotional labor to do these things, to put your heart out there. You're putting your writing out there. You're putting mm -hmm. everything out there. And as beautiful it is to turn, you know, um, and not in a cheesy way, but turning pain into purpose. That to me, yeah. that doesn't mean that um, it's worth it, honestly. Mm -hmm. And to me, it doesn't mean that it's, I don't mean it in a platitude kind of way. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean it in that um, it's beautiful if you, if you can turn it into something. Does yeah. that mean that I'm thankful for the pain mm -hmm. or for an illness or for this? I'm mm -hmm. not there. Some people yeah. are, I'm not there. I'd give it back in a heartbeat. I would give yeah. it back. Yeah. <laughs> But I wonder what it'd be like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I can get mm -hmm. stuck in that a lot of time or I can get stuck in the grief of uh, all the years. Like, because unlike you, I was diagnosed at 32. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm 33, so. Yeah. So the yeah. not knowing and I can trace it back to teenage years for mm -hmm. sure. Now, no. Oh, yeah. But um, all that to say is it's beautiful what you've done. I also want to be aware to the listeners too. I always say this because when I was in the pit, I'd be like, well, good for you. I can't do that. And you know what? Just showing up and living is enough. Like mm -hmm. Missy is not, you know, she is doing beautiful and wonderful things, but she's also showing up. If you go on her Instagram, she's showing up in the messy middle. And mm -hmm. I would rather follow anybody that shared because that is where um that's where I connect with most people mm -hmm. right 
it, our tendency, we care what people think, right? Is to show up. Right. And yeah. be like, I conquered this or look how I mm -hmm. fix this. Yeah. And not that it's not yeah. good to talk about our accomplishments. I mean, look at your beautiful accomplishments. But what I'm saying is that I connect more with people that are in the messy middle and I find it vulnerable if it's safe for you, right? Not right. traumatizing yeah. people. That but is one thing. Sorry, safe, that's okay. I'm on a rampage. If it's safe for you um, to show yeah. up like that because it gives people permission. And the thing that is the hardest with bipolar disorder is that it is chronic and there is no cure yet. And as mm -hmm. hard as that is to accept, knowing that for me takes off the expectation of being better, right? Like I get stuck in my head, like why aren't you, if whenever I get into an episode, I'm like, you know, better than this, or in my head, I'm like, why are you here again? Or what a fake, you know, mental health advocate. And then I'm like, wait a minute, lying brain. Yeah, right. I've done that a lot. Um, I've had to learn how to, um, and I had to have a talk with my therapist about this is how do I protect my mental health and because uh, I do and I love it because I want to start a community and I'm so grateful for all the friends I've met like I talked to Paris the other day and it was just like it's just great talking to people who, who understand you know and it's like oh I get it you don't even need to you know uh, yeah. but I do have a lot of people that e that will message me and they will you know they'll, they'll tell me a lot and i have to learn to say you know i'm sorry i can't be there for the way like didn't need me yeah. to um you know here's a link to my help this year page or uh you know i hope you know yeah you it's holding more. space for everyone right and yeah. as uh, it's i have some folks or sometimes i say like like I think sometimes as a large Instagram account and a podcast. And because when I show up here, yeah, I'm showered, I'm talking, I'm, you know, but that doesn't mean that I'm not struggling. And so it does take a lot of emotional capacity. And so sometimes I feel like I have to be there for everyone. Right. Yeah, and I feel, yeah. and unless I miss it, I answer every message is what I want to do. And sometimes I will do things for others to the detriment of my own mental health. So I think that's yeah. an amazing lesson yeah. that, or, that you have learned. And I think one of the things that I do and my friends do as well is we talk about like a white heart or a blue heart, or we have like these, this emoji that it's like, I read your message. I, you know, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm there, but you might not have mental capacity to, do you know what yeah. I mean? But do you yeah. have capacity? And it doesn't mean they don't care. Cause mm -hmm. a long time ago, I would just feel like, you know, you don't mean to trauma dump, but sometimes people can't, can't hold it. So that's why it's I always, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. lot. To, it is yeah and i'm like i uh, i appreciate you but um you know people will be like well i just got put on this and i just you know i'm and i'm just like oh it's hard you know, and i think it's, it's okay to say like i've shown up before and i'd be like hey like i have missed you know a bazillion messages i will try to answer you but you know and also i feel like um sometimes lots of people are struggling so we're not always, you're not always, and I know I've not always been aware of, mm -hmm. you know, and of asking a lot. And I think that it's really beautiful when people can respect if I'm like, hey, I have capacity to hold space for this, or I have, right. and I do that. And that's why, like I was telling you with the, right. podcast, I don't give a time and I don't say every week right. because in order for me to keep showing up at something, I have to set it up in a way that I can be successful. And mm -hmm. that is being right. you know going right. with the flow and working alongside of my mm -hmm. moods or or other things because otherwise I'm just fighting against it and I'm no help to anybody right right yeah 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 I'll pause it me okay. too me too actually okay. so Missy I would love to hear how this journey of creating comfortable silence and putting your creativity, your art, your words out there. How has that helped you on this healing journey? I feel 
through a comfortable silence that I can finally be myself and I can show other people that, you know, um, it's okay to be different. Uh, you know, you are the only, you're the only one in this entire world and ain't that something, you know? Yeah. And it's giving me, I know that I, this, this is what I was born to do. This is my life's purpose. And it means the world to me that others can resonate and are, you know, more open to sharing their story. And, you know, we got this, you're not alone. You're not alone. So. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. And I'm so grateful that we, that our paths have crossed. And I'm so grateful for the work that you put out in the world and your heart. I can see it in every design. I just, I can feel your warmth and your, your love for others. And I just, I'm inspired by how you talk about loving yourself. And I like, love, love, love the idea. You've reminded me um, to keep up with the affirmations. I can, I can. Absolutely. It's that. called I am, and it has changed my life. And I do want to quickly give a shout out to my therapist. Yes. <laughs> so, um, this is therapist, we love you. I love you so much. <laughs> you know who you are. Thank you for putting up with me in my dark days. <laughs> Thank you for listening so. to the podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know she will. That's amazing. I love that so much. Um, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really glad to know you and I'm so glad that you're here and I'm so glad that you chose even in those dark, dark times to, to continue showing up. I mean, I know you didn't have a choice, but you are so resilient and brave mm -hmm. and strong and I can see that and I can see that in your vulnerability and that makes me feel safe and comfortable um, being your friend and I can feel that through your page and even like wearing your shirt it and your the bracelet that your mom made are you kidding me yeah uh, it just feels like a, a warm hug and I just want those that are watching or listening to know that you can feel that too and go and um, you know support Missy we've got the website down there go and yeah run don't walk buy all the things let's support our friend that is doing her life's purpose in a beautiful and authentic way and so yay and so missy i would love to just wrap up the podcast with if there is someone listening right now that is in the pit and the lowest of low or in the highest of highs and struggling and angry what would something that you that you would like to say to them you, uh, I would say, remember when you thought you couldn't get through it and you did it last time, mm. you're going to do it again, you know, and it's okay to not be okay, but um, you're never alone. And, you know, I believe in you is all I want. You know, I hope you believe in yourself, but I believe in you too. Oh. I I'm so passionate about it. I just, <laughs> I love it so much. This is the mm -hmm. the best space to be passionate and mm -hmm. emotional. And I, I mean it when I say it, I'm so glad you, you exist. And this has Thank been you. such a lovely time together and you will not be able to get rid of me because now we are friends forever. Yeah, I know. Right now. Friends, exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. And um, thank you so much. Yeah, this is Bipolar. Thanks again for tuning in. You can find video versions of This Is Bipolar on our YouTube channel. We also have all our previous and soon to be future episodes of the podcast on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, and Google Play. We spend most of our time on Instagram at this.is.bipolar. There is a vibrant community there where we have conversations and post different ideas and different strategies and we'd just love for you to join us there. It is so helpful if you enjoy our work or think it would be helpful to someone if you could like and share and save and follow us in all or any of those spaces. If you're a listener for the podcast, if you could leave a review, we would be forever grateful. Again, thank you for being here with us. Let's get the word out. Let's share lived experiences so that we can change 
the ideas that people have about bipolar and help those of us that live with it feel less alone. This is bipolar.